Praise the Lord. According to one year Bible reading plan, day 253, we have Ezekiel chapter 15 to 18. Ezekiel chapter 15. The Lord spoke to me. Mortal man, he said, how does a wine compare with a tree? What good is a branch of a grape vine compared with the trees of a forest? Can you use it to make anything? Can you even make a peg out of it to hang things on? It is only good for building fire. And when the ends are burned up and the middle is charred, can you make anything out of it? It was useless even before it was burnt. Now that the fire has burnt it and charred it, it is even more useless. Now this is what the Sovereign Lord is saying. Just as the wine is taken from the forest and burnt, so I will take the people who live in Jerusalem and will punish them. They have escaped on fire, but now fire will burn them up. When I punish them, you will know that I am the Lord. They have been unfaithful to me, and so I will make the country a wilderness. The Sovereign Lord has spoken. Ezekiel chapter 16 The Lord spoke to me again. Mortal man, he said, point out to Jerusalem what disgusting things she has done. Tell Jerusalem what the Sovereign Lord is saying to her. You were born in the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother was a Hittite. When you were born, no one cut your umbilical cord or washed you or rubbed you with salt or wrapped you in clothes. No one took enough pity on you to do anything of these things for yourself. When you were born, no one loved you. You were thrown out in an open field. Then I passed by and saw you squirming in your own blood. You were covered with blood, but I wouldn't let you die. I made you grow like a healthy plant. You grew strong and tall and became a young woman. Your breasts were well formed and your hair had grown, but you were naked. As I passed by again, I saw that time that had come for you to fall in love. I covered your naked body with my coat and promised to love you. Yes, I made a marriage covenant with you and you became mine. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Then I took water and washed the blood off you. I rubbed olive oil on your skin. I dressed you in embroidered gowns and gave you shoes of the best leather, a linen headband and a silk cloak. I put jewels on you, bracelets and necklaces. I gave you a nose ring and earrings and a beautiful crown to wear. You had ornaments of gold and silver and you always wore clothes of embroidered linen and silk. You ate bread made from the best floor and had honey and olive oil to eat. Your beauty was dazzling and you became a queen. You became famous in every nation of your perfect beauty because I was the one who made you so lovely. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. But you took advantage of your beauty and fame to sleep with everyone who came along. You used some of your clothes to decorate your places of worship and just like a prostitute, you gave yourself to everyone. You took the silver and gold jewelry that I have given you, used it to make male images and committed adultery with them. You took the embroidered clothes I gave you and put them on the images and you offered to the images the olive oil and incense I had given you. I gave you food, the best floor, olive oil and honey, but you offered it as a sacrifice to win the favor of idols. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Then you took the sons and the daughters you had borne me and offered them as sacrifices to idols. Wasn't it bad enough to be unfaithful to me without taking my children and sacrificing them to idols? During your disgusting life as a prostitute, you never once remembered your childhood when you were naked, squimmering in your own blood. The servant lord said, You are doomed, doomed. You did all that evil and then by the side of every road you built places to worship idols and practice prostitution. You dragged your beauty through the mud. You offered yourself to everyone who came by and you were more of a prostitute every day. You let your lustful neighbors, the Egyptians, go to bed with you and you used your prostitution to make me angry. Now I have raised my hand to punish you and to take away your share of my blessing. I have handed you over to the Philistines. You hate you and are disgusted with your immoral actions. Because you were not satisfied by the others, you went running after the Assyrians. You were their prostitute, but they didn't satisfy you either. You were also prostitute for the Babylonians, the nations of merchants, but they didn't satisfy you either.
This is what the sovereign Lord is saying. You have done all this like a shameless prostitute. On every street you built places to worship idols and practice prostitution. But you are not out for money like a common prostitute. You are like a woman who commits adultery with strangers instead of loving her husband. A prostitute is paid, but you gave your presence to all your lovers and bribed them to come from everywhere to sleep with you. You are a special kind of prostitute. No one forced you to become one. You didn't get paid, you paid them. Yes, you are different. Now then, Jerusalem, you or hear what the Lord is saying. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You stripped off your clothes and like a prostitute you gave yourself to your lovers and all your disgusting idols. And you killed your children as sacrifices to idols. Because of this I will bring all your former lovers together. The ones you liked and the ones you hated. I will bring them around you in a circle and then I will strip off your clothes and let them see you naked. I will condemn you for adultery and murder. And in my anger and fury I will punish you to death. I will put you in their power and they will tear down the places where you engage in prostitution and worship idols. They will take away your clothes and jewels and leave you completely naked. They will stir up a crowd to stone you and they will cut you to pieces with their swords. They will burn your houses down and let crowds of women see your punishment. I will make you stop being a prostitute and make you stop giving gifts to all your lovers. Then my anger will be over and I will be calm. I will not be angry or jealous anymore. You have forgotten how I treated you when you were young. And you have made me angry by all the things you did. This is why I have made you pay for all the evil. Why did you add sexual immorality to all the other disgusting things you did? The sovereign Lord has spoken. The Lord said, People will use this proverb about you, Jerusalem, like a mother, like the daughter, and you are your mother's daughter. She detested her husband and her children. You are like your sisters who hated their husbands and their children. You and your sister's cities had a Hittite mother and an Amorite father. Your older sister with her villages in Samaria in the north. Your younger sister with her villages in the Sodom in the south. Were you satisfied to follow in their footsteps and copy their disgusting actions? No, in only a little while you were acting worse than they were in everything you did. As surely as I am the living God, the sovereign Lord says, your sister Sodom and her religious never did the evil that you and your religious have done. She and her daughters were proud because they had plenty to eat and lived in peace and quiet, but they did not take care of the poor and the underprivileged. They were proud and stubborn and did the things that I hate. So I destroyed them, as you well know. Samaria did not sin half as much as you have. You have acted more disgustingly than she ever did. Your corruption makes your sisters look innocent by comparison. And now you will have to endure your disgrace. Your sins are so much worse than those of your sisters that they look innocent beside you. Now blush and bear your shame because of you, your sisters look pure. The Lord said to Jerusalem, I will make them prosperous again, Sodom and her villages, and Samaria and her villages. Yes, I will make you prosperous too. You will be ashamed of yourself and your disgrace will be shown to your sisters how well off they are. They will become prosperous again and you and your villages will also be restored. Didn't you joke about Sodom in those days when you were proud and before the evil you did had been exposed? Now we are just like her. A joke to the Edomites, the Philistines and your other neighbors who hate you. You must suffer for the obscene, disgusting things you have done. The Lord has spoken. The servant Lord says, I will treat you the way you deserve because you ignored your promises and broke the covenant. But I will honor the covenant I made with you when you were young and I will make a covenant with you that will last forever. You will remember how you have acted and be ashamed of it when you get your older sister and your younger sister back. I will let them be like daughters to you even though this was not part of my covenant with you. I will renew my covenant with you and you will know that I am the Lord. I will forgive all the wrongs you have done, but you will remember them and be too ashamed to open your mouth. The sovereign Lord has spoken. Ezekiel chapter 17 The Lord spoke to me. Mortal man, he said, tell the Israelites a parable to let them know what I, the sovereign Lord, am saying to them. There was a giant eagle with beautiful feathers and huge wings spread wide. He flew to the Lebanon mountains and broke off the tip of the cedar tree. 
which he carried to a land of commerce and placed it in a city of merchants. Then he took a young plant from the land of Israel and planted it in a fertile field where there was always water to make it grow. The plant sprouted and became a low, wide-spreading grapevine. The branches grew upward to where the eagle and the roots deep. The vine was covered with branches and leaves. There was another giant eagle with huge wings and thick plumage. And now the vine sends its roots towards him and turned its leaves towards him in the hope that he would give it more water than there was in the garden where it was growing. But the vine had already been planted in a fertile, well-watered field so that it could grow leaves and bear grapes and be a magnificent vine. So I, the sovereign lord, ask, Will this vine live and grow? Will the first eagle pull it up by its roots and pull off the grapes and break off the branches and let them wither? It will not take much strength or a mighty nation to pull it up. Yes, it is planted, but will it grow? Won't it be withered when the east wind strikes it? Won't it wither there where it is growing? The Lord said to me, Ask these rebels if they know what the parable means. Tell them that the king of Babylonia came to Jerusalem and took the king of his officials back with him to Babylonia. He took one of the king's family and made a treaty with him and made him swear to be loyal. He took important men as hostages to keep the nation from rising again and to make sure that the treaty would be kept. But the king of Judah rebelled and sent agents to Egypt to get horses and a large army. Will he succeed? Can he get away with that? He cannot break the treaty and go unpunished. As surely as I am the living God, says the sovereign Lord, this king will die in Babylonia because he broke his oath and the treaty he had made with the king of Babylonia, who put him on the throne. Even the powerful army of the king of Egypt will not be able to help him fight when the Babylonians build earthworks and dig trenches in order to kill many people. He broke his oath and the treaty he had made, did all these things, and now he will not escape. The sovereign Lord says, As surely as I am the living God, I will punish him for breaking the treaty which he swore in my name to keep. I will spread out a hunter's net and catch him in it. I will take him to Babylonia and punish him there, because he was unfaithful to me. His best soldiers will be killed in battle, and the survivors will be scattered in every direction. Then you know that I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will take the top of all to the tree and break off its tender sprout. I will grow it on a high mountain on Israel's highest mountain. It will grow branches and bear seed and become a magnificent cedar. Birds of every kind will live there and find shelter in its shade. All the trees in the land will know that I am the Lord. I cut down the tall trees and make small trees grow tall. I wither up the green trees and make the dry trees become green. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will do what I have said I would. Ezekiel chapter 18 The Lord spoke to me and said, Why does this proverb people keep repeating in the land of Israel? The parents ate the sour grapes, but the children got the sour taste. As surely as I am the living God, says the sovereign Lord, you will not repeat this proverb in Israel any more. The life of every person belongs to me, the life of the parent as well as that of the child. The person who sins in this one, who will die? Suppose there is a truly good man, righteous and honest. He doesn't worship the idols of the Israelites or eat the sacrifices offered at forbidden shrines. He doesn't seduce another man's wife or have intercourse with a woman during her period. He doesn't cheat or rob anyone. He returns what a borrower gives him as security. He feeds the hungry and gives clothing to the naked. He doesn't lend money for profit. He refuses to do evil and gives an honest decision in any dispute. Such a man obeys my command and carefully keeps my laws. He is righteous and he will live, says the Sovereign Lord. Then suppose this man has a son who robs and kills, who does any of these things that the father never did. He eats the sacrifices or the forbidden shrines and seduces other men's wives. He cheats the poor, he robs, he keeps what a borrower gives him as security. He goes to pagan shrines, worshipping disgusting idols, and lends money for profit. Will he live? No, he will not. He has done all these disgusting things, and so he will die. He will be to blame for his own death. 
Now suppose this second man has a son. He sees all the sins of his father practiced but does not follow his example. He doesn't worship the idols of the Israelites or eat the sacrifices offered at the forbidden shrines. He doesn't seduce another man's wife or oppress anyone or rob anyone. He returns what a borrower gives him as security. He feeds the hungry and gives clothing to the naked. He refuses to do evil and doesn't lend money for profit. He keeps my laws and obeys my command. He will not die because of his father's sins, but he will certainly live. His father, on the other hand, cheated and robbed and always did evil to everyone. And so he died because of the sins he himself have committed. But you ask, why shouldn't the son suffer because of his father's sins? The answer is that the son did what was right and good. He kept my laws and followed them carefully. And so he will certainly live. It is the one who sins who will die. A son is not to suffer because his father sins, nor a father because of the sins of his son. Good people will be rewarded for doing good, and evil people will suffer for doing the evil. If someone su stops singing and keeps my laws, if he does what is right and good, he will not die, he will certainly live. All his sins will be forgiven, and he will live, because he did what is right. Do you think I enjoy seeing evil people die as the sovereign Lord? No, I would rather see them repent and live. But if a righteous person stops doing good and starts doing all the evil, disgusting things that evil people do, will he go on living? No, none of the good he did will be remembered. He will die because of his unfaithfulness and his sins. But you say, what the Lord does isn't right. Listen to me, you Israelites. Do you think my way of doing things isn't right? It is your way that isn't right. When a righteous person stops doing good and starts doing evil and then dies, he dies because of the evil he has done. When someone evil stops sinning and does what is right and good, he saves his life. He realizes what he is doing and stops sinning. So he will certainly not die, but go on living. And you Israelites say, what the Lord does isn't right. You think my way isn't right, do you? It is your way that isn't right. Now I, the Sovereign Lord, am telling you, Israelites, that I will judge each of you by what you have done. Turn away from all the evil you are doing and don't let your sin destroy you. Give up all the evil you have been doing and get yourselves new mind and hearts. Why do you Israelites want to die? I do not want anyone to die, says the Sovereign Lord. Turn away from your sins and live. May the Lord bless us abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.